Hi, we're back. I'm Broward County Commissioner Stacy Rader. I'm here with Stacy Kagan, who's a local Coral Springs Parkland businesswoman and an Allstate agent. And we're talking about the dangers of driving and uh, being on your phone or texting. Stacy is. Are you a spokes all spokesperson? Spokesperson for the X the Text campaign. And um, during the break, we were talking about who you talk to about the dangers of texting and. So you, when I say texting, you would associate calling the same. I mean, texting, dialing and driving, even answering a phone. Um, how do you, what's the, is there a position on, like my car has a... Um, Bluetooth? Well, yeah, but it has an, it's called an iDrive, and so I, it's right here on the, next to the console, next to the yep. gear shift. I'm well aware. Of okay. <laughs> um, and so, but I still take my eyes off the road to see That's what, right. what, um, radio station I'm tuning to, for example. And then it'll display the name, usually, of the caller. Right, right. But it's also on my, on, on, dash. on my, um, steering on wheel. wheel. You know, I can change, I can answer a call, or, which I don't ever do, but okay, answer a call that way, but that's still considered... You're distracted. So, um, is there an advantage to having these hands-free safety ones? I think it's a better alternative because there's, let's face it, there's always going to be somebody who gets in a car drunk, and there's always going to be somebody that's going to answer a phone. So we have to be realistic. If I can tell you which I personally think is a safer method, yes, absolutely, having Bluetooth, because there's always people that are going to do it. Dialing, whether you're using your little turning knob or you're pressing a button, I have a big problem with that. But if you do have Bluetooth in your vehicle and it's as simple as you're driving and you're pressing a button on your steering wheel, I do feel a lot more comfortable with that than I do having you adjust a dial and have to see, oh, is that the right number I have to call? But having said that, talking on the phone and driving is still considered a, a major distraction. Yes. But also, when you have another person in the vehicle with you and you're having a conversation, that's a distraction too. So, to be realistic, we can't say, oh, when you're in the car, don't speak. Mm -hmm. um, I do strongly recommend that if somebody is upset or they're in an argument, please don't even get in your car. Don't even answer the phone. Don't even talk. Calm yourself down. And what a lot of people don't realize is the more people that are in the vehicle, the more chances of you getting into an accident. And for a teen that is so inexperienced, I remember, and I was guilty of this as a parent when my daughter had just driven, I used to say, oh my God, I don't want her in the car alone. Right. What happens Especially if... Especially daughters. Right. Girl. I have a daughter yeah. too, I know. What happens if she gets stuck and she's by herself? Mm -hmm. Or if she gets a flat tire? Or... Right. If there's a problem. They're so much more vulnerable than my right. son, for example. Exactly. But really, statistically speaking and safety-wise, when there is a new driver, they have to learn that car. They have to learn the feel of the car. They have to learn where everything is on the dashboard. They have to learn where the knobs are. They have to learn the comfort of the car. So a new driver, really realistically, should drive alone. At least for the first 60 days. Then maybe incorporate one other person in the car. And have parents be choosy on who they let their child drive with. So if they know that their child is getting into a new car, and they have a friend that's a little bit wild, or a little bit boisterous, or who wants to take control, that's going to even further distract the driver. And as there are two and three and four people in the car, it just further complicates it. This one wants to go here. This one wants to go to the movies. This one wants to go to the beach. Make the radio louder. Make the radio lower. Adjust the AC. So all of these distractions take a driver's eyes I, I know. off the road. I, I'm the worst person to drive with my daughter because I'm yelling, break, break, all the time. And she gets really upset when yeah. I'm in the car with her, so I just sort of close my eyes. And she's 20. She's been driving for almost yeah. five years now. And it's now. so hard. It's very difficult, especially as a mom. Very, very difficult. So who do you speak to about this? Who are you? What is your um, audience for educating? Okay. Well, I speak in a lot of the schools here in Broward County. I've also spoken at a few schools in Palm Beach County. What I do, we do this free of charge, so there's no charge to the school. It's simply an educational program that we can bring in to really any school that we can arrange at a time. And what I do is I usually work with DECA, which is the business organization in the schools, SGA, which is student government, and drama. And usually one of them becomes my contact. I then have... Do you have to call... Do you call a local principal? Do you call the school board? Sometimes I call a principal. Sometimes somebody will say, oh, I heard you did this. Can you contact this person? And what's really great and my favorite thing is when I get a call from a student 
who says, oh, by the way, I heard you speak at Douglas, or I heard you speak at Carl Blades, or Tara Vella, can you come speak at my school? We hear it's great. We want to bring the program. So that's really my biggest, my biggest honor, when a kid or a teen can recommend me to another team. Well, if you want to get a hold of Stacy, we'll, we'll put her information on the bottom of this, but the, her, her office phone number is 954-341-4236 if you're interested in having in contacting her about having her come out and speak to your organization. You've got teenagers and you've got adults, adults too, who have to be Absolutely. as educated. Correct. So are you speaking to adult groups? Yes, I've spoken to adult groups at some local synagogues. Um, here in Coral Springs at a few events, and I've also done parent team nights at some of the schools. I have been a little disappointed in the turnout that I've had for the parent team nights, and where it's an area where I think parents should take the initiative and want to be there and want to have that open lines of communication with their children. And what a, a lot of the parents say to me, Stacy, it's not my kid; it's the other kid I'm worried about. But what they don't realize is their kid, their teen, their child is making the same mistakes that other teens are making. It's just a lot easier to rationalize that your child is perfect and your child is the perfect driver. Where good kids are not always perfect drivers and bad kids are not always bad drivers. So when the parents get educated and they see the statistics and they see the videos that I share, it, it's eye-opening. And I've had parents come over to me and send me emails and friend me on Facebook and say, oh my God, I didn't know this. And we have something, it's in one of my little stacks, and a lot of parents, believe it or not, are afraid or don't want to have the confrontation with their teens. It's called the parent-teen driving contract. Mm -hmm. So before any teen should be behind the wheel, parents should sit down and say, look, these are the rules. My insurance agent gave this to me or I got this online. These are the rules. If you do this, this is the consequence. If you do this, this is the consequence. If this wonderful thing happens, guess what? I'm going to let you drive a little bit out of the neighborhood, or I'll let you drive at night, or I'll let you have one or two friends in the car. But it takes the stress off the parent, and it puts it on all state. And it says, look, my insurance agent would like for you to fill this out, watch this video, which is great. And the great thing about this video is when we talked about earlier, it's teen to teen. It's teens talking to teens and sharing their experience instead of me getting on a stage and lecturing for two hours. Right. So everything on this video is interactive and it takes a lot of the stress off the parent to do the parenting driving contract. So I recommend to everyone, before their kid even gets their permit, do this, start the conversation. And again, they should be talking to their kids at eight, nine, 10, not 15, about the dangers on, on the road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our guest this morning was Stacy Kagan, who is a Coral Springs Parkland business person and a local Allstate agent who is the spokesperson for the Allstate Exit the Text campaign. And this is not a commercial for Allstate nope. because no matter whether you're an Allstate customer or not, you should not be texting and driving. So Correct. thanks again this morning. Again, you can reach her at 954 341 4236. We'll have the information for Stacy on the bottom of the screen of, of this video so that anyone who wants to have her come out and speak to your group, whether it's a school or a private organization like Kiwanis or whatever, you can get a hold of Stacy. Thanks thanks so much for being my first guest post-summer and drive safely.